right, all right, all right. I'm back. Back in action. So, I had a little bit more I wanted to talk about, and I was hoping to have a nice conversation with everybody out there. Just kind of get my thoughts, and and we would kick this idea around. And I think the idea really boils down to what is a toxic fandom? What does that even mean? What does that mean for us as fans? You know, for most of us who are here, there's some sort of franchise, something out there that we're really, really into. I mean, even for myself, yes, you can see behind me, I have an Anat. I have baby, baby Yoda behind me, right? Somewhere right there. Hi, baby Yoda. He's been a co-host on our show. You've also got a bunch of Godzilla figurines. And uh, for those of you who are maybe just tuning in, because I've seen some people come back here, it's uh, I'm the man you may know, Z, from Our Reviews Will Kill You, and we're here to talk a little bit about what does it mean to be in a fandom and whether or not it can turn toxic, right? Because what we have here is an article from Salon. And... The commentary is about, let's all stop ignoring the fandom menace. It's real and it's winning. Winning! It's got tiger blood, right? So what are we looking at here? There's something that I think is inherent in all of us as fans. Like, there's there's something that we care about. Something that we really enjoy. Something that we love. You know, whether it be Star Wars. Whether it be some form of anime. Whether it be uh, The Boys. Or maybe it's... I think Pete and, and the boys is actually good, a good reference because you have these cult things that that people follow and people are really really into, and then you have like newer newer projects that people are afraid to become fans of because or afraid to become hardcore because they can't handle what um, like what could potentially happen to their franchise and we'll we'll talk about Game of Thrones right we talked a little bit about Game of Thrones previously in our uh, you know in many of our streams where you have a material that's based on on these books and the books are really great people love the books by George R.R. Martin and they get turned into a show the show if you recall didn't actually start as a hit it wasn't really that popular but by word of mouth and by people looking at it and moving on they, they became big fans of it and maybe went back to the books and it just built in popularity to the point where it became the most popular show on television. But then it, it ran out of source material, got to season six, seven, and eight, where they no longer had a blueprint for how to do this, this show, which then turned out into one of the most disappointing finales of all time, which then leads to HBO ordering... They ordered an entire uh, pilot that cost, I think, 30... It probably cost more than that. Like, maybe. I'm not sure. But I heard it cost $30 million. I could be wrong. It could be more. Where uh, $30 million for a pilot with Naomi Watts about um, George R. R. Martin's world of Game of Thrones. That they threw out. Never to see the light of day. Maybe one day we'll be lucky enough to see it and see why it was thrown out. Why it was so bad. We have no idea. But it's fascinating to see these type of things, right? Where nowadays people are afraid to become like hardcore fans, and 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 shows are even afraid to go beyond their their scope because they're afraid the hardcore fans will turn on them. A really good example of this is right now, and if you want, I can kind of Google search this. Um, Reva's lightsaber, right? Hasbro Plus. This is direct from the site itself. United States. Let's go. And this was something that I thought was kind of fascinating, right? So there's this this uh, ha- Hasbro, which makes a lot of toys and owns a lot of products, right? They own the uh, Star Wars properties. They own G.I. Joe, Transformers, things like that. And there are hardcore collectors and hardcore fans who will um, buy special toys and things like that, right? And recently... Let's see if we can find it. Um, So what they do is they put up these things where they're like, we will make this if we can get enough backers, right? So here is Reva from Kenobi Show. 
Um, the Black Series Reva, the third sister Force FX Elite Lightsaber. The target was to get to 5,000 backers. Currently, there are only 1,307 uh, 1, backers, right? The funding ends in 10 days, three hours, and six minutes. It costs $500. So this is for hardcore fans, hardcore collectors. This is beyond your normal, like your normie fan. And what I would say is that the hardcore fans are what keeps a cult uh, show alive. It keeps things moving. It keeps people excited about it. You know, the hardcore people are the one who are going to be, they're going to proselytize. They're going to go out there and they're going to tell everybody how great this franchise is. So we look at this and it's barely a quarter of the way backed. And when you think about it, what does that, what does that mean? You know, there's 10 days left and it doesn't seem like it's going to make it. In the meantime, we're going to look at this. The G.I. Joe classified Hiss truck right and i don't i you know i would say i'm a gi joe fan i'm not a hardcore fan and obviously i have toys in the background but i'm not like a hardcore collector i'm not going to pretend that i am you know i have things from my childhood that i like if i see a cool godzilla toy i might pick it up but i'm not a collector that's for sure and i'm not you know i'm not an expert on any of these things but what i can see are things with my own eyes and what i see here is the cobra hiss tank which looks pretty cool right uh, I guess it's like an original series, whatever it is. It just posted two days ago. It's $300 for this thing. And this is similar to the other stuff that we've talked about in the past. There's a Galactus toy that was really, really cool. There is a, um, a hand, there, uh, there, there's, there's only been a handful of things that have failed. Uh, there was a uh, Unicron toy, a Transformer. That was that was put up. There was Job of the Hutt's barge that was put up. So these are for specialized super fans that want to collect something really, really unique and really cool. They're only going to make a limited amount of them. They become collector's editions. This went up two days ago. There are 45 days left. Three hours, four minutes. They needed a target of 8,000, which was higher than the Revo lightsaber. There are almost 12,000 backers. 11,869. You know, when we look at this thing, uh, as far as the toy goes, I, you know, look, I guess it's cool. Looks cool to me. I think it's cool. I would never spend $500 on it, but holy macaroni. And the cool thing, I guess, is when they break certain levels, they'll give you additional, additional features. So these are like highly, highly detailed toys, right? So let's go back one the Riva toy this lightsaber which I think is kind of a you know look I'm not a lightsaber master but seems like kind of a dumb idea this like spinning wheelie lightsaber thing which can be you know a cut in half or whatever and it's and it's a little bit more money it's it's what $200 more give or take what you're looking at is something that's not uh, it's not going to get funded and it's going to be just like the rancor that didn't get funded so your hardcore star wars fans are losing faith in the franchise why are they losing faith in the franchise they're losing faith in the franchise because of the products that are being put out you know gi joe had some bad movies but not enough to ruin the series. People probably like those live action things. Most people probably ignored them. They still have the, the uh, original series to go back to and the toys. So now we're gonna take one more step backwards and we're going to go and talk about this article. So let's all stop talking. Stop ignoring the fandom menace. It's real and it's winning. In this article, they're, they're talking about it, and this was an episode from Stephen Colbert, which is ironic. They they would they would talk about Stephen Colbert because I am, you know, I wouldn't say I'm a fan of his. He's definitely got his own perceived angle, and I'm not here to talk politics. What I'm here to talk about is how fandoms have been politicized, which is extremely strange to me because there's not really a side to fans right they just watch what they want to watch they do what they want to do they put they put their money 
where they want to put their money. And they're saying that Stephen Colbert trolled Miss Marvel. And this is a quote from the Stephen Colbert show. Ladies and gentlemen, America has lost another battle in the culture war, which is surprising because we've got all the guns. This time the battlefield is comic books. And folks, that saddens me because I'm a fan. This is an affront that has uh, has taken me aback. A Muslim cannot be a superhero for Pete's sake. They're on the no-fly list. It's even more upsetting when you consider when you consider the original Miss Marvel. She was wholesome, an all-American blonde, family values with two bulging chest muscles, clearly wearing her Sunday church panties. Uh, it, he goes on and on, and you know he was supposedly spoofing a uh, you know Bill O'Reilly and other Fox pundits and blah 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 blah, right? But what this this article continues is that they're saying that they you know these toxic fans are going after people, and they're saying that they harassed Moses Ingram from the Obi Wan Kenobi show. Now, someone who watched every minute of the Obi Wan Kenobi show. The character of Reva, Moses Ingram's character, was not given a plot line until the fifth episode. She was really not given anything to work on. And they're saying, like, bigots piled onto her because she was terrible, blah, 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 blah. It's really, it's really weird. So what So what they're talking about, uh, you know, that these people rallied around a hate for Rian Johnson's uh, Lucasfilm sequel. And if you recall, during The Last Jedi, when things came out, people who hated The Last Jedi were called man babies. They were assaulted. They were ridiculed. They were insulted by the creators of the product. That would be as if George Lucas came out and said, everyone who likes Indiana Jones, who doesn't like the fact that he uses a whip because it's a reference to slave times, is a bigot. Like, what are you, you know, you, you're conflating these things and making them two different things. You're, you're, like I said, you're politicizing something that does not need to be politicized. They're also going to tie, tie Gamergate and Comicsgate into it. And with this, they are, they're, they're really trying to point out people who are specifically that they are considered like, full of hate and bigots and and racists and all this stuff and I'm I'm just like I'm kind of stunned at what they're what they're doing uh let's see if they they na- they and they what they say is that they're these people are, are specifically targeting some of these actors I'm pretty sure that the hate for Obi Wan Kenobi show uh, people hated like everything that they didn't like about it my uh, myself included where I was even criticizing there's a fight scene between Reva and Darth Vader, and some of the moves that Darth Vader does are stupid. Like Darth Vader doing like these weird hand motions so he could stop her from using her lightsaber seemed pretty stupid. And the fact that he walks, like they made Darth Vader stupid. How is that a cri- criticism of Reva? We're, we're, really, we're literally criticizing everything about the show. We're tearing it down because it's not presented in a logical way. You have Darth Vader walk up to a spaceship. He doesn't see the second spaceship, tears the spaceship apart with the force, and then lets the second spaceship just fly away because no one's paying attention. That doesn't make any sense. It doesn't logically make sense. He also stabbed, he kills, he attempts to kill multiple people in the show. And instead of making sure that they're dead, he walks away from them. He buries Obi-Wan Kenobi in rocks and goes, oh, you must be dead and walks away. Even though he can feel in the force whether or not they're alive, Obi-Wan Kenobi in the original series could feel when everyone on Alderaan died. Why can't you feel when a force user right next to you is dead when you bury them in rocks? Same thing with Reva. He murders Reva with twice. He kills her twice. He impales her with a lightsaber twice and she should have died and did not die. Why? Because the writers aren't that good. So that's where criticism comes from. But somehow they're going to make it about some sort of craziness. And maybe they pull some of this stuff out from like nonsensical trolls. Okay, who cares? There's always going to be knuckleheads who say dumb things. People are always going to say dumb things. But it seems like they're specifically targeting certain... um, certain shows or, or, or certain fans, right? They're, they're specifically pointing out that these fans are, you know, review bombing and they're ruining things. 
they definitely didn't review bomb Captain Marvel. I did a video on Captain Marvel. It's like at 94% on Rotten Tomatoes. Like, what are you talking about? Where's the review bombing happening? Happening. What's really happening is people just don't care. Half the audience of the lowest uh, rated show on D- on Disney Plus for Marvel, which was Hawkeye, showed up to watch Miss Marvel. No one ca- no one cares. You're trying. It's it's almost like the bat whammon thing. So now they're saying this is the direct quote from the article. They serve as a distraction from the more dangerous problem. The more dangerous problem posed by a handful of YouTube influencers, such as geeks and gamers, or the quartering, whose bread and butter is anti-Star Wars and anti-Marvel videos. Look, if I like something, I'm going to tell you I like it. And while I don't know um, Jeremy from Geeks and Gamers, or I guess it's Jeremy from the quartering, I don't know those people. I have watched their videos. I think they have some good points to make. I don't always agree with them. Sometimes I do. But I don't think that they're specifically targeting anyone. And I don't think that they're hateful people. And I don't think that they're bringing anything negative to the table. I think they're doing criticism. Just like I myself took flack. I like Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. Yes, there are plot holes with it. Yes, there are things I don't like. But my like for the actors in Sam Raimi overrode how much I disliked it. And I gave it a good review, despite other people saying it wasn't that good. We give our honest opinions. I don't necessarily think that they're toxic. And they're saying that they're pushing review bombing, which doesn't make any sense. An exhaustive, extensively researched 2021 Medium post authored by rewriting Ripley draws the connection between Star Wars toxic fandom and these YouTube personalities and the right-wing ecosphere that came before them and continues to nourish them. How these figures profit off of racism and, and misogyny in ways that aren't obvious prima facie, but are, are not well hidden. There, So yeah, it is. It is Jeremy and Jeremy. So it's um, Geeks and Gamers and The Quartering and Ryan Cannell. And they're saying these guys are alt-right, which I think is crazy. I, I just, I don't necessarily think that they're alt-right. I mean, it's it, it, who cares what their political uh, beliefs are? What we're talking about is criticism of Star Wars. And no matter what anyone tells me, you can't tell me that Kenobi was a well-written show. You can't. I tried to, I, I argued it in a different video. It just doesn't make any sense. It's not a thing. Now, maybe these guys are um, blowing things up and, and maybe um, <laughs> instead of using, so they're basically saying that these guys, instead of using racial slurs, because, you know, they would just start shouting out racial slurs, they use terms like woke and railing against SJWs. I think it's fairly clear from a financial perspective that when The Force Awakens does like a billion dollars and then you have the sequel to it do a little bit worse, right? Ryan Johnson's um, whatever, uh, you know, his, his film didn't do that great. And then you have the last one directed by J.J. Abrams, uh, Rise of Skywalker, do even worse People are going to say this doesn't, you know, this doesn't make sense. You know, clearly from a financial perspective, regular fans are tuning out. That doesn't make them bigots because they don't like it. Right? Um, They're saying like, oh, people are going after Kathleen Kennedy. Kathleen Kennedy literally fired like five or six directors. She should be held accountable for that. When you direct, when you fire Lord and Miller, who literally went on to win an Oscar because you didn't like what they were doing with the solo movie, and then you hire Ron Howard and he finishes the movie and then it bombs from a Star Wars perspective, you have no one to blame but Kathleen Kennedy. Those are financial decisions that she's making. I don't see where there's like racism or violence or what are they talking about? 
It, it, it just doesn't make any... They're, they're saying... That it, it's, I just don't get it. Oh, <laughs> really doesn't make any sense. And, they, and their own argument doesn't make any sense. They're saying, like, why didn't we hear any backlash over Ming-Na Wen's casting in The Mandalorian or the Boba Fett with Rosario Dawson taking on the role of Ahsoka Tano? Because we like those actors and they do a good job. There's nothing wrong with them. There's nothing going on. Oh, I'm sorry. Insult Investor's back. Thanks for joining the conversation, my man. Uh, let me see. Uh, anything but the... Uh, I, I, I wasn't... I couldn't... I can't see the uh, comments as well as I'd like to. Yeah, you don't call... Uh, the only thing I will say is the Darth thing. And I had to issue an apology about this. Now, when Obi, Obi-Wan Kenobi does say Darth... So, for context, I got really upset. And, and there was an article that I reviewed that there was somebody who really, really liked the Kenobi show. And when... Obi-Wan Kenobi says, I'm sorry, Darth, or whatever he says. He, he genuinely calls Darth Vader Darth as if it were his first name. Now, I rechecked out the original uh, Star Wars, and Obi-Wan Kenobi does call Vader Darth, but I, do, but I think he does it in a mocking way, and Darth is technically a title because there's Darth Sidious, there's Darth uh, Vader, um, there's Darth Maul. So you've got Darth as a title, not necessarily as someone's first name. It makes people insane, right? Uh, when they see things like that. And and what my point was that you had a fan who you eventually broke their suspension of disbelief because you said something that was so stupid in the writing. So when you have bad writers and writers without experience, yeah, people are going to be um, angry about it. Right. Uh, what else are they going to talk about? They're they're trying to. There's a bunch of things. You know, people are like, I don't know where like all the racism and anger comes from. Like, I, I just don't know why everything has to be uh, racist. If somebody wrote a character poorly, that's not racist. You know what I mean? Like, that doesn't make any sense. And they're trying to say that these YouTubers are monetizing this anger and this 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 hatred but it's not yeah i'm sure these guys are making so much more money than you know kathleen kennedy is making you know the woman's making millions and millions of dollars and putting out garbage that's diluting and destroying this thing that people love it's just amazing that somebody could could come after this um, they're mad that, you know, Kelly Marie Tran came out as Rose, you know, the Rose Tico character. Um, because people didn't like that character. Guess what? The character didn't make a lot of sense and people didn't like the character. The action figures don't sell. Why? Yeah, because of racism. No, because people just didn't like it. I just, I'm, I'm just struggling to understand why they would attack these people. And why this this article from Salon is allowed to even, you know, look, you're allowed to have your opinions, but I just don't understand when this became like, oh, they're just going to call everybody racist and misogynist. And it's just strange. Whoever this Melanie McFarland is, I just I just don't understand where it's coming from. And you have to think like, I mean, even the the Inquisitors don't even make sense from a Star Wars perspective, from my understanding of Star Wars, the Emperor was extremely xenophobic and didn't like aliens. Why he would allow Darth Vader to have a bunch of aliens go and hunt down the Jedi doesn't make any sense to me. The Grand Inquisitor was an alien. His, uh, his second in command was, a, was, a, was an alien. Reva was the only human or human looking person. I just, you know, maybe if you made her an alien, people would have liked her more. I don't know. I just, you know, people are trying to look for consistencies in something that they grew up with and spent a lot of time on and just have this article where they're just like, guess what? Everybody's racist. All these people who don't like something are racist. Just because you don't like it, I don't think it makes you a racist. That seems kind of strange. You know, and they're trying to complain about Miss Marvel. Miss Marvel's got nothing but like positive reviews. You know, the show is okay. You know, I reviewed it myself. 
it's not like the worst show but it's not exactly what i would call captivating television it's like a tiny bit of a step up from the cw special effects aren't great the story is pretty basic there's no antagonist in the first two episodes so what are we supposed to do with that doesn't make any sense you know reeve is set up as the antagonist in the first episode of kenobi how come miss marvel doesn't have one strange right so i just feel like this is just weird to have these people come out and look I, i'm not I'm not trying to claim anything one way or the other other than fans shouldn't be attacked for something like this. You know, are they going to attack fans for not buying her lightsaber? Is that what you're going to do? Is the lightsaber, is, is somehow the Cobra hiss tank less racist than this Star Wars uh, Black Series Force lightsaber? I mean, I don't know. What are we talking about here? It's very strange. I don't understand why this, like, you know, what is going on here? We don't need to attack people. We don't need to be angry on either side. I think people are allowed to criticize things, especially when you have, you know, professional writers like the Critical Drinker go on and he's criticizing Kenobi because the writing is not good and he's criticizing every angle He's criticizing Obi, you know, Ewan McGregor. He's criticizing everything about it because it's not written correctly. It's written very poorly by someone who's either an amateur writer or, you know, the uh, the major writing credit that the showrunner had was Army of the Dead, which I wouldn't exactly, the, the Zack Snyder Army of the Dead from Netflix, which I wouldn't exactly say is one of the greatest written f uh, films of all time. You know, even for a zombie movie, it was kind of like goof, goofy and not that smart. So are these people who aren't paying for her lightsaber racist? I'm confused. You know what else didn't sell? And I'm going to see if I can find it here on the HasLab. We'll go to the Star Wars ones. We'll go to view all Star Wars. You know what didn't fund? Let's see if I can find it. Do they not have it? Uh, maybe there's a search. We'll look for the Rancor. Ranker. Here we go. This also did not fund. You know why? The target was 9,000 and it did not fund because people didn't like the quality of it. They thought it was, you know, if you're going to spend, I don't know how much it was going for, but I'm sure it's a couple hundred bucks. It's ugly. It's not as good looking as the original toy. I had the original toy and it was way cooler than this. The colors are wrong. The details are not very good. This was not a quality. This does not look like a ranker to me. This looks pretty crappy. For a couple hundred bucks, I'm not willing to spend it on this. I, de I understand where they're coming from. I get why people don't want it. It was going to come with, I guess, with like a Luke character. But even the Luke doesn't look that good. People will pay for quality. They will not pay for garbage. You cannot make people pay for something that is is not good enough I, I was looking through the through the pictures here and i don't know if everybody saw it but yeah it's just it's not good enough and this did not get funded just like the reva lightsaber won't get funded star wars seems like you're killing this this uh franchise and this product you know people used to pay a lot to collect all this stuff and it's just not if it's not quality it won't be there so I get where people are coming from. People can criticize. This part of film criticism has been around for a million years. Well, not a million years. Like however long film's been around. But criticism of all sorts of, whether it's public speech or anything. So I just, I felt like that was a thing I wanted to talk about. And, you know, not that we're associated with those channels. We're, you know, we're not big enough to talk to them or anything like that. But, um... Look, I just, I just don't see it. I don't see the connection. This seems like false outrage to me. And that's, that's the devious part, is the false outrage. If it's not real, you're just making it because you want to prove your point. Make better quality, and I think it will be better. So, if you have comments, please let, let me know down below. Uh, I know this was a little bit of a preachy moment for me and I just wanted to kind of 
address it because all the other channels, the quarter, they've all addressed this as a hit piece. And, uh, you know, I think they throw around some things that are just unwarranted and unjustified and make things strange for people. And I know we usually do a lot of comedy here and I don't care about the politics. I think it's all kind of irrelevant. But when you start calling people things that they necessarily aren't, you know, maybe they're you know, if one thing they might be outrage merchants. That's that's one thing. Uh, there's people getting outraged over things that I don't necessarily think there's an outrage for. It's more like eh, apathy. And I think the critical drinker does sum that up. It's where he just doesn't care to review things because the quality has gotten so poor. Um, but you know, when you care about something, you want to you, you want to express yourself about it, and you care about a product because it was important to you. It meant something to you. As, as from Heels versus Babyface, Babyface described in his description, you know, he talks about the reason why he collects the toys and why all these things happen and why he cares so much is because when he was a child, it was important to him. It, it was an escape for him. It was a way for him to cope with what was going on in his life. And I, I can see how people can attach themselves to that. And when they care about a product or not, not like, like a product, but like an intellectual property that's important to them because it helped. Um, force their personalities or, or it was something important to them it made it makes sense and I don't want to begrudge anybody that it's like why you know would you want us to go after your favorite intellectual property I was a huge X-Files fan right for example and then the quality of the show went in the toilet and I could no longer accept watching the show and I, I realized that the writer and creator of the show had no overarching plan for it and that kind of crushed me and I was reluctant to catch on to shows from then on. Same thing with Lost, if you think about it. People were really excited about Lost and then they realized that J.J. Abrams and his crew had no real plan for the show and the quality went down. And do people really talk about Lost anymore? You know, these these franchises that people were... Re I mean, we're talking about some of the number one shows on television and then they fall apart. So... Just wanted to make a point here. Whether you agree or disagree with me, let me know down in the chat. I really do appreciate it. Uh, be sure to check out our full-length audio podcast. They're usually funnier than this. And we usually like make a lot more jokes. But you can catch us, uh, Stitcher, Spotify, iTunes, all those other great places. Catch our live streams here Friday night. 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time is when we start. So get prepared because we're going to get it on every Friday night. But as for me, I'm wrapping it up because I am on to the next one. Ah.